Hi, I'm Tim Preby with TNS in Oklahoma City. In this video, we're going to take a detailed look at WordPress's visual editor used in pages, blog posts, and other areas in WordPress. This box that the text of our page appears in is known as WordPress's visual editor. Some places it's also referred to as Tiny MCE because that's the technology that actually powers WordPress's visual editor. Let's go through our two toolbars here up top and see what all the different functions do. First off, if you do not have a second row on your toolbar, you may need to click this button that looks like a couple rows of toolbars and it will show you the additional line. First thing we have is the option to bold our text. If we select some text and click bold, as you might imagine, the text then appears bold. You can do single words, entire paragraphs, or any combination. The next button makes our text italic. And the button after that is strike through, which will generate a line through our text. Depending on your website's setting, the text probably won't actually appear red. The next button lets us put a bulleted list. You can highlight our text, click the bullet item, and then hit enter or return on our keyboard to make multiple items. If we want to start a new line without making a new bullet item, you can actually hold down shift on your keyboard and hit return and it will go to the next line. We've done that a couple of times and then let's go back to just hitting return without shift. That shift return trick actually works in paragraphs as well. The next button is for a numbered list instead of a bulleted list. Let's actually change this bulleted list into a numbered list. And there we go. The next button will create a block quote. In the visual editor, that shows as slightly indented on the left and right side of a section of text. However, how that is displayed on the front end of your website will vary from website to website depending on your design. After that, we have some text alignment options. I'll make some new paragraphs here. You can see that we can align our text left, which is the default in this case, centered, or right. We'll go ahead and change it back to left. The next button allows us to insert links. We'll click on this link button. And then let's link to an existing page. So we can click this down arrow. It gives us a list of our pages. Or we can type the specific page we want and it will search all pages for that text. Here we're going to insert a link to our contact us page. So when we click it, it actually inserts the URL up here. You can link to anything from here so we could even link to google.com. Let's do that. We'll type in google.com and click add link. And there's our link. Sometimes you may want to remove a link you've created. In that case, just click anywhere on the link you want to remove and then click this icon that looks like a broken link. Now our link is gone. Some themes will support a more tag for blog entries. A more tag means that's where it will cut it off and make you click on a more link to view the rest of the content. 
we'll insert one of those here. Again, your theme may or may not support that. Let's go ahead and delete it for now. Finally, you can actually edit in full screen. WordPress calls this distraction-free writing mode. So if we click on that, we can see that we're now editing in a much more minimalistic environment. This can let us concentrate more on the writing and not worry about all the things surrounding that. Let's exit that full screen mode. And let's move on to the next line in the toolbar. You'll notice we are skipping a couple of things. We already talked about this kitchen sink button. This particular button was actually added by a WordPress plugin, TablePress. We're actually going to talk in more detail about TablePress in a separate video. Your website may have a Styles drop-down here, or it may skip this and go straight to the Paragraph drop-down. Styles lets us do a few different things depending on our website. This particular theme allows us to select an image and then we can click on image without border. So the inference we can make there is that by default any image inserted on this page will have a border but if we click on it and then change to image without border it will remove that border. Again those specific styles will vary from theme to theme from website to website. The next option is our paragraph drop-down. By default, everything you write in here in the visual editor is a paragraph. We've already looked at converting some things to a bulleted list, to a numbered list, or to a block, a paragraph within a block quote. Some other options are available in this drop-down. You can have an address, which may or may not look different depending on your theme, pre-formatted, and then different heading levels 1 through 6. The reason it does not go past heading level 6 is because HTML itself only supports 1 through 6. Typically you want to logically go through the heading themes but some themes will not support or will recommend against certain heading levels. Here's heading level 1 heading level 3. So if we started with heading level 3 and then we made a new section that we would logically consider a subsection of that, then logically this one should be heading level 4. But if it's another section that's of equal importance of this section, we would make it heading level 3 as well. Now don't get too caught up in all the heading levels. Uh, we will want to, of course, preview our edits to see how all these different options we've done will look. But we'll wait till we finish getting through the toolbar to do that. The next button will allow us to underline text. Be cautious when underlining text because generally, online, only links are underlined. If someone sees underlined text, they may assume that it's a link and get frustrated when clicking on it doesn't do anything. The next option is the option to fully justify our text. You can see here that that means it lines up on the left and on the right. Online, studies have shown that the easiest text to read in big paragraphs is actually left aligned text. That's different than in print, justified text has been shown to be easier to read. But online, in general, we want to keep it left aligned. The next button we recommend using sparingly, but it will let you change the color of your text. In fact, you can literally pick any color through these different options. Again, remember, 
that the default color was set by your designer and so was probably made to look well and work well and have high visibility on your site. If you customize that color, you're running the risk of making it harder to read and look terrible. The next two buttons are for pasting in text from external documents. Sometimes if you paste the text directly into here by clicking and then pasting, it will actually put some extra HTML in there you don't want. So if you're copying from a different text program or a different website, you should use paste as plain text. Or if you're copying from Word, use paste from Word. If your page has gotten junked up because you've done different formatting and undone it and it's just kind of gotten into a jumbled mess, you can highlight everything and click on Remove Formatting. That will greatly simplify things. You can see that removed our bold paragraph and that changed our italicized paragraph back. However, it left this paragraph strike through. So it doesn't remove literally everything, but it will help you clean some things up. From time to time, you may want to insert some special characters. Typically, this is used for things like the copyright symbol and bullets and other characters like that. We can click on this button, the horseshoe looking button, and see all the different characters we can insert. Here we have the copyright symbol. Let's go ahead and click on that, and we can see that it's inserted here. I could add the year after that to show a copyright on my page. Then I may want to add a bullet and my phone number. We can also indent paragraphs or bulleted items by using the next buttons. So you can see now that's a nested ordered list within the list above it. So this is number one and two under number one. Or we may want to move it back and unindent it. And we can do so like that. There's also an undo option and a redo option and some basic help. Let's go ahead and preview these changes before we actually update this page by clicking preview changes here. We can now see our page with the different changes we've made. Let's assume we hate it. In that case, we can simply leave this post. Now if we go back to that particular post to edit it again, we can see it's back to our original text, but there is also an autosave available that's more recent than the version below. When we click view the autosave, we can see the differences between the two. And here on the right, we see all the different texts that we just edited. Just for fun, let's click Restore This Autosave. We'll click Preview Changes again. And this time, let's go ahead and keep it. So we'll click Update. In a different video, we will look at the table option that this particular website has set up. We'll look at adding forms through Gravity Forms, and we'll look at adding media. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, 
you might consider signing up for our email newsletter at tnsgo.com newsletter. If you need any help with your online marketing, contact us to see if we might be a good fit. You can reach us at 405-285-0348.